Okay. Okay, I think now we're gaveled and microphoned. So here we go. Good afternoon. I call this oversight hearing to order. As we close out the 116th Congress, we will hear from leaders of the tribes and tribal organizations on what Congress can do to further strengthen the foundational principles of tribal sovereignty and self-governance during today's hearing, titled From Languages to Homelands, Advancing Tribal Self-Governance and Cultural Sovereignty for Future Generations. Before we get to other opening statements and the witnesses' testimony, I would like to take a moment to recognize Vice Chairman Udall, who is retiring at the end of this Congress. This being our last Indian Affairs Committee uh, hearing of the year, I want to thank him for his dedication and steadfast leadership to this committee. This committee has a long history of working in a bipartisan manner, and this spirit of bipartisanship continues today. For example, in the 115th and 116th Congresses, we've passed 80 bills out of our committee. Over half of those have received co-sponsorship by both Democrats and Republicans. Since 2017, Senator Udall and I have served as Vice Chairman and Chairman of this committee. And Senator Udall is a large reason why this bipartisan tradition has continued. And I think we've got like about a dozen bills we're trying to hotline right now, too. So the work continues. I greatly appreciate and am proud to have worked with Vice Chairman Udall on legislation that improves the quality of life in Indian country. This includes S211, the Survive Act, which secures resources for Indian victims of violent crimes, as well as the recently signed into law Progress for Indian Tribes Act, which strengthens and reforms self-governance and self-determination programs. These are in addition to the many bills that Senator Udall has helped shepherd to the president over the years, including the Esther Martinez Language Reauthorization Act and the Native American Business Incubators Act as examples. I want to thank Vice Chairman Udall for his friendship and his service to our country, the great state of New Mexico, and to Indian country. And I want to wish you, Vice Chairman Udall, and Joe, uh, very best wishes going forward in what I know will be very productive and very good future endeavors. I also want to th take a moment to thank our respective staffs on the committee for a job well done. From my staff, John, uh, Jacqueline, James, Chase, Brandon, Holmes, Caitlin, Christy, and Elizabeth, and, and most of all, uh, of course, to Mike, uh, our staff director, who is exceptional. Uh, I acknowledge all of you uh, for the professional work you do, and, uh, and I thank you. Uh, and I also thank uh, the, uh, uh, in addition, uh, Jim and Avis and Zach and uh, Dawson, and uh, also Jack. And also I want to say thank you to Mel, who has been the committee hearing reporter this past Congress. Thank you, sir. And with that, I will turn to Vice Chairman Udall. Thank, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you so much, and thank you for the very kind words and the kind words Senator Murkowski and others have uh, said here today. And, and uh, I, I uh, you know, for the past uh, 43 years, the Senate has relied on this committee uh, to lead its work advancing federal Indian policy and living up to our uh, constitutionally enshrined trust and treaty responsibilities. I'm honored to have been a member of this committee for the past 12 years, over one quarter of its history, and to have led this committee alongside you, Mr. Chairman, for the last four years. During my tenure with the committee, we have joined together with tribal leaders to advance Indian country's priorities. 60 of the committee's bills have been enacted in that time, and we have seen countless other committee-led policies included in broader Senate packages. And Mr. Chairman, I take no small amount of pride in not noting that the committee's productivity under our leadership has been remarkable. Together, we have convened over 50 hearings and enacted 21 Indian Affairs bills. The spirit of bipartisanship is alive and well in the Indian Affairs Committee. And I expect that tradition to continue long after we depart these halls. Indeed, it has been a historic decade. I'm proud that we have helped expand self-determination programs to new departments. 
permanently reauthorize the Indian Health Care Improvement Act, improve access to federal native language programs, restore tribal jurisdiction over domestic violence offenses, secure inclusion of Indian country priorities in the Farm Bill, that was a big first, support small businesses and entrepreneurs in native communities, and ensure tribes were not left behind when Congress negotiated COVID-19 relief. And I've fought alongside tribal leaders to defend tribal sovereignty, sacred sites, and the Indian Child Welfare Act. Our work in Indian Affairs is proof positive that bipartisanship can still find its footing here in Washington. That progress and principles need not to be sacrificed for political gamemanship or political expediency. I have often said that I came to Washington to take the tough votes, to tackle the difficult issues. When it comes to Indian Affairs, there have been many times where it would have been easier, more expedient, more popular to give in and say sovereignty sometimes, self-governance when it's convenient, or consultation if there's time. But public service isn't about what's doing what's easy. I came here to fight for New Mexico, to fight for Indian country, and to legislate from a place of principle. Today's hearing is an opportunity to reflect on these lessons, to examine our shared legacy, and discuss what still remains to be done. Though through my own time in the Senate, though my own time in the Senate is drawing to a close, my commitment to the core principles that have guided my work on Indian Affairs throughout my public service careers, careers remain unwavering. Soon we will hear from Governor Vallo, President Francis, and Mr. Echohawk, and I hope everyone will consider their testimony with great care and attention. And as tribal leaders and advocates in their field, I'm heartened to have them as witnesses today. I also hope we will ask ourselves how we can act on their advice better. Respect tribal sovereignty, promote tribal self-determination, ensure government-to-government -government consultation is meaningful. These principles must be the bedrock for federal actions because if we truly want to advance sound policies for future generations, we must all commit to a principled approach to developing Indian Affairs law and policy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for working with me to convene this important hearing. I can think of no better topic to close out our work for the 116th Congress. And with your indulgence, I would like to just add one more thing before I wrap up my statement. Success in Congress is built on collaboration, members working together with other members, committees working with other committees, and of course, members working with their staff. The remarkable success we've enjoyed in the Indian Affairs in the last four years is the result of the work of each senator on this dais, and I'm truly humbled to have called you all colleagues and friends. It is also due in no small part to our excellent staff, without whom we would surely be lost. So I will close by saying thank you to my own Indian Affairs Committee staff, as you have done with yours, Mr. Chairman, Jennifer Romero, Anthony Cedillo, Kim Moxley, Josh Mahan, Connie Sosi de Haro, Manu Tupper. Your tireless work on behalf of the committee and Indian country has been of the highest caliber. Thank you. Thank you. I yield, Mr. Chairman, to you. Thank you, Vice Chairman Udall. And with that, I would turn to other members who would like to make an opening statement? Senator Murkowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, to <clears throat> Vice Chairman Udall. Appreciate the fact that we have scheduled, as you point out, um, Senator Udall, a very important hearing as it relates to advancing tribal self-governance, cultural sovereignty, future generations. It's a pretty forward-leaning, and I think, as you say, it's a very fitting uh, way to end a very productive um, committee schedule here within Indian Affairs. I'm not going to be able 
to, to stay for the balance of the hearing and hear from these three very important witnesses. Uh, I'm working on trying to put together a COVID emergency relief package and part of, of my focus within that is to ensure that uh, our indigenous peoples, that the tribes are represented, that we have tribal set-asides, whether it's um, making sure that when state and locals receive money that our tribes uh, also receive that federal support, whether it is tribal set-aside for broadband or for the nutrition programs, making sure that we are always thinking about our first peoples and putting them first. Um, but before I leave, I want to take just a couple minutes and recognize Vice Chairman Udall, uh, my friend, uh, not only my friend here on the Indian Affairs Committee, but my partner for many years now on interior appropriations, where we have oversight of IHS, of BIA, and so many of these very, very important accounts. I've had an opportunity to be here on the committee now for my full tenure, 18 years on the Indian Affairs Committee. And I agree with you, Senator Udall. I think that this is a, a place where we can come together, work through some, some different issues, because we all come from different places, and, and the needs of, of uh, the Native people in, in New Mexico may be different than in Alaska or, or in the Dakotas. But we know the needs are there, and they're very real. And we work together to solve that. So to call this place, this committee, a, uh, a refuge of, of bipartisanship, I think, is, is a tribute to the committee, to the staffs, and uh, to the effort to try to, to do right for all the right reasons. I think, I think about the things that we've partnered on just in this 116th Congress. We've had some, some criti pretty critical pieces of legislation come together. Um, some have become law, some we're gonna need to keep working on. But uh, when I think about what we what we did to build on uh, the tribal jurisdiction provision within the, uh, it, within the VAWA Act, the 2013 VAWA, uh, the Native Youth and Officer Protection Act, addressing violence against Native women, children, and tribal um, law enforcement. You've also got your badges uh, legislation, addressing public safety needs in Indian country. Uh, what we have done to, what we as a full committee have done to address the unconscionable uh, uh, crisis as it relates to murdered, missing uh, uh, indigenous women and girls. Um, what we have done to get the attention of the agencies to improve data collection, uh, understanding what it is that we know and understanding what it is that we don't know what we're doing to improve public safety resources and clarifying tribal jurisdiction. You mentioned the, the sovereignty issue. Uh, I was very pleased to be able to work with you and your team as we filed that bipartisan, bicameral amicus to make the case for the constitutionality of, of the Indian Child Welfare Act and Congress's authority, uh, the trust responsibility to legislate for the benefit of, of Indian tribes. I think it was probably the most, one of the most significant pieces of Indian legislation that Congress has enacted. And, and to, to really maintain the integrity of, of Native culture and, and family. Um, so working together with you on that was, was very, very important. On the culture side, the work that we've been able to do uh, when it comes to languages has been so, so, so very important and appreciated. You mentioned the Esther Martinez Native Languages Act, uh, but we've also uh, introduced the Durban Feeling Native Languages Act uh, just recently. So we had Esther Martinez signed into law last year and know that I'm gonna continue our joint effort uh, as we work to support native languages. And then I mentioned the work that we've done on, on uh, interior appropriations and the partnering that we have done. Uh, we've got some pretty strong staff 
uh, Rebecca and Emmy and the rest of the teams there that have really worked to ensure that the support for Indian Health Services um, and, and health care for Native peoples is good, it's solid, it's robust. We know we've got to do more. Um, but what we were able to do with advanced appropriations for IHS, that's significant, significant stuff. That's, that's legacy stuff. Um, and, and then again, I think in the midst of this pandemic, the impact uh, that we have seen in Indian country uh, with disproportionate health and economic impacts, everything that we can be doing to work on a bipartisan basis uh, for the betterment uh, of, of Native peoples and the fiscal and, and, and the health needs are, are things that, uh, whether, it's, whether it's New Mexico, whether it's Alaska, whether it's North Dakota, we, we are doing this together. I want to thank you for, uh, for really your leadership and your care and your heart, particularly for uh, American Indians, Alaska Natives, Native Hawaiians. Um, I've seen you engage in so many other different issues and areas, but you can tell that your heart is with the people. And so I thank you for that. We'll miss you. I'll, I'll miss, uh, miss having you and Jill here, but know that your contributions are appreciated and will be long lasting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Murkowski. And we'll turn to Senator Smith virtually. All right, then we'll proceed if she returns, we'll give her the opportunity.